yesterday i was talking to you about various kinds of languages we have talked about procedural languages functional programming languages object oriented programming languages visual programming languages logic programming languages and scripting languages this was done yesterday there are two more types of languages which have to be covered in classification of languages the first i am going to talk about is called query language query language is a very interesting language in the sense that it cannot be used for programming you cannot write a program in that this is a specialized language which can be used only for writing queries so you have a lot of data in a database in that database you would like to ask some questions now these questions you have to frame in a particular syntax so that the database will be able to understand what you need and give you the output now here is an example let us say you are right now working on sundry letters for your customers there are a large number of customers to whom goods have been supplied at various different times and each one has been given credit for a different period of time depending on the agreement somebody was asked to pay within 45 days somebody was asked to pay within 60 days somebody was given a very long credit of 90 days so invoice dates are different credit periods are also different now you would like to ask a question from your database which are the payments which are already due as on today that means the database has to check what was the invoice date what was the credit period allowed for the customer if you add that is that date before today or after today this you need not do for each indi invoice individually you can write a query so once you write the query the result of the query is given by the database on your screen this becomes much easier and that report which comes from the database you can then format in the way you want you may like to have in the ascending order of customer names or in the ascending order of period for which the debt is overdue all that you can do so to create such queries we have languages called query languages the most popular query language is sql structured query language sql works with most of the databases originally it was meant for oracle but now it works for almost all the commercial databases including our own microsoft access but of course for each database the syntax is slightly different not much different if you have understood sql once you will be able to use it practically everywhere so such queries you can create using query language queries can also be used for not only asking questions queries can also be used for modifying the database and sometimes for deleting records from the database and sometimes for adding new records to the database how this can happen is let's look at the modification of the database imagine that you are working on hr table human resources table where there are names of employees and for each employee there is a basic pay and your company has decided that since we did very well last year we are going to give across the board increment to all our employees and their basic pay will be increased by 5% very good decision now there are 1000 employees each has a different basic pay somebody's basic pay is 10000 20000 30000 so for each basic pay 
you have to calculate what is the new basic pay and enter that as the basic pay. Just imagine, if you have to do it one by one for each record, how long it will take? So, you can use an edit query here. So, in edit query what you will say, read the value of basic pay, multiply it with 1.05 to add 5% to that and new value you post it as the basic pay. By writing this three lines in a query, you can create a query for modifying the data in the database itself. This saves a lot of effort. Adding records, yes, add record queries are also there and they are very useful. You are working in a company in which there are 1000 employees and your company has purchased one more company now, a smaller company, where there are 300 employees. These 300 employees now become your employees. So their data is to be added to your HR database. But the problem is your HR table and their HR table format is different. In our table, first name is column number one. In their table, first name is third column. And we write first name as F name. They write first name as first underscore name. Such differences will be there. How do we tell the database to read the data from this field and then add all the records in this, this, this manner to the original table? If you are going to do it manually, it is a very time consuming job. So here again, you can write a query. That query is add record query. So maybe 200 records can be, add, can be added just by writing a few lines in the query language. A similar situation arises when a large number of records are to be deleted. So there also a query can be written in a query language. The most popular query language, as I said just now, is structured query language. But there are other query languages also. Microsoft Access, for example, provides a very interesting wizard pattern that is query by example. So you need not actually learn the query language. Just by answering a few questions in a wizard, all the simple queries you can create. More complicated queries? Yes. You will not be able to use only the wizard. Then you need to have a knowledge of the query language also. And the last type of language about which I want to expose to you is markup language. Markup language. The most popular markup language is everywhere on the internet because every page which comes on your browser is actually an HTML page. Hypertext markup language. In these languages, again, the first thing that you remember is they cannot be used for programming. You can't uh, write uh, a program to say add numbers or subtract numbers that will be too cumbersome in a markup language. These markup languages are used only for marking up a page in such a manner that it can be displayed in a particular fashion in a browser. So let's think of HTML itself. In HTML let us say there is a para on a web page which we want to display and in this para I would like the font to be Arial Narrow. The color of the font I want as red. Size of the font I want, want as 13. Now this if you given direct text then 
that doesn't get rendered properly in the browser so we give it as a markup markup means we create tags for every tag there will be a starting tag and an ending tag so starting tag says font type arial narrow and then there will be an ending tag which will have one extra character a reverse slash with that the tag ends like that you can have tags within tags within tags these are called nested tags with these nested tags you can mark up the language and display it exactly as you want to do then we have many other variations also in that one markup language is html but the next is xml x stands for extensible the difference between html and xml is that in the html the tags are fixed there are a number of tags available in html you can use only that those nothing other than that but in xml you can create your own tags you can define your own tags for example in html you will not have a tag which deals with uh, currencies that two currencies of very uh, very uh, unpopular nations or not so well known nations like uh, uh, rial some arabic currency you will not have markup for that but in extensible markup language you can create that also xml gives enormous facilities to the users you will be interested to know that even our income tax department is using xml as one facility for giving you an option to file your income tax returns even that option is there so for filing an income tax return one method is that you work online you open your return online and then one by one the pages come and you go on entering data in that go on saving that is one method but this is not very easy because you need continuous internet connectivity if your internet connectivity is not continuous or not very reliable this method doesn't work so they they give, they give you another option you download the xml file it's a very small size file less than 500 kilobytes you download that file it looks just like an income tax return form in that you enter all the data since xml is built into that all the calculations happen as if it is online so you complete all your work on that after you are satisfied that full data has been correctly entered then all that you do is upload the xml file again once you upload the xml file your return is filed so just in two transactions one download and one upload both of very small size you are able to do a lot of work so easily using xml another great use of xml is that xml can be used for transferring data from one application to another it can do it very effectively because it can read the markup in one file and convert that into appropriate data in the other file so let's say you have some data in excel microsoft excel which you would like to transfer to microsoft access no problem at all you don't have to copy and paste excel data you export to an xml file then go to access import that file and your data is transferred very correctly to be transferred vice versa is also possible 
from Microsoft Access. You can export to an XML file, import that in Microsoft Excel and your data is in front of you. So such things also can be done using XML. That's why XML is used even in the client server architecture in the form of the business layer. You know, in the client server architecture, on the server side, we have the backend, which contains the database. And on the client side, we have the user interface, mostly graphic user interface. Now, whatever is to be displayed on the client side, ultimately the data has to come from the database only. And it has to come through a middle layer called business layer. For transferring the data from business layer to the user layer, again, XML is used. <clears throat> and one last interesting fact for you, the Microsoft Office 2007, 2010 and all later versions including Office 365 uses XML. That's why the file name extensions are also containing the letter X. A word file has the file name extension dot .docx. An XML file, uh, sorry, an, H, an Excel file has the file name extension dot .xlss. X. Again, X is added at the end. A PowerPoint file has a file name extension dot .pptx. With this built-in XML, we are able to transfer the data very easily from one application to another within Microsoft Office. So you can create a chart in Microsoft Excel, display it in your slide on PowerPoint or display it on a, on a document, Word document and save it as an HTML page that can be sent over the internet also, it will be rendered properly. So the use of XML is very, very empowering. It gives us a lot of facilities. Actually, SM XML <coughs> is derived out of an international standard. And that international standard markup language is called SGML, Standard General Markup Language. SGML is an international standard given by International Standards Organization. From that, XML has been derived. And from that, many other markup languages have been also derived. For example, in electronic data interchange, EDI systems, we have specialized EDI systems which deal with various kinds of industries. You have a specialized EDI for sanitary industry. You know, sanitary industry like Hindustan sanitary wear, who make wash basins and toilet seats and uh, towel stands, all sanitary products. For sanitary industry, there is an EDI version available. Similarly, for mathematical calculations, there is an EDI version available. For fashion industry, we who do garment designing and things like that, for that also, there is an EDI version. All these versions need a markup language. They are all different. And each of these markup languages 
is again derived from SGML, which is the international standard. So that's how markup languages are very, very useful and they give us a lot of facilities. Uh, HTML has a dynamic HTML also, which is called DHTML. So in DHTML, we can do some additional things also. Like yesterday I was talking to you about client-side scripting. Client-side scripting, when it is added to an HTML page, that needs DHTML. And you can also do one more thing. You can use style sheets. Now this is again a very interesting concept in e-commerce. Because in e-commerce, on our website, we will have hundreds of pages. Perhaps each is dealing with a separate product. The appearance of these pages, if it remains static, if it remains same day after day, the regular customers feel bored. You know, if you are to look at the same page again and again, same matter, just a few words changed, you cannot give attention to that. To, to excite you to look at the page again and again, to make you feel interested in the content, it is very necessary that even though the content may not change much, the appearance must change. So how do we keep the content constant and change the appearance dramatically? That can be done by using style sheets. Style sheets come under CSS or cascading style sheets. Cascading means one style sheet can contain another, which can contain another and so on. When cascading style sheets are used, the content need not change. Content can remain as it is. You change the style sheet and the whole appearance of the page will become entirely different. When you want to use cascading style sheets, again you are making use of dynamic HTML. So in markup languages now, see how many things have come. HTML, DHTML, XML and so many versions of SGML for EDI, etc. So this is another kind of markup languages. Another kind of language. When it comes to Android development, that means developing of apps for smartphones, there also all these functionalities are required. Therefore, when we are trying to develop apps for the Android platform, we have to use many of the languages simultaneously. The most important language which is used in Android development is Java. But many others are also used. Just wait. You can wait here at the back. Besides Java, many other languages are also used like Kotlin, C++, C Sharp, Python, HTML, Cascading Style Sheets, JavaScript, Dart, etc. So that was about the types of languages or uh, the classification of languages. Now having done that, I would like to give you a brief introduction to some of the most, most popular and most used languages in computer programming. The topmost is Java. <clears throat> you will be interested to know that Java is actually a name of an island. It's name of an island. And that island is in Indonesia. 
Indonesia is very different from the geography of India. India is a peninsula. It's a kind of triangle extending from Kutch in Gujarat to Kanyakumari at the southmost tip to Bengal on the eastern side. So it's a kind of a triangle surrounded by sea on all three sides. Indonesia is not like that. Indonesia is a group of islands scattered in the ocean. It's called an archipelago. A-R-C-H-I-P-E-L-A-G-O. So countries like Maldives, Indonesia, they are neither continents nor islands nor peninsulas. They are archipelagos. So each archipelago will have various islands and all these islands have to be given some name just like you know in cities for every city they give a different name so there for every island they give a different name in Maldives for example there are so many islands and each is a holiday spot so one of the islands name is say Havla when you get down at Malay Malay itself is an island you have to take a speed boat to go to Havla Similarly, in Indonesia also, since it is an archipelago, there are so many islands and one of the islands name is Java. That is how the name started. And Java is also used for one more meaning. Java is a kind of coffee bean. We have coffee beans here. Similarly, a coffee bean is there which is called Java. It can be boiled in water, brewed and then you get a very invigorating drink with that. So these are the other meanings of Java. But for our purpose, Java is the most well-known, most popular programming language. Java was invented by a programmer or a scientist whose name was James Gosling. He invented it in the year 1995. Originally, it was product of a company called Sun Microsystems. Sun Microsystems was very popular and uh, they owned Java originally. But Sun Microsystem got into managerial problems and ultimately the product was sold to Oracle. Oracle is the same company which pioneered RDBMS. So today we can say Java, Java developmental environment, Java computing platform, they are all part of the Oracle company. Java is a very multi-purpose language. It can be used for practically anything. As I mentioned, you can use it for Android app development. You can also use it for creating video games. You can create new video games with that. So nowadays, so many video games are there on different platforms. Very massive games are there. Massive multiplayer games are there. So they can be developed using Java language. At the same time, you can use Java or processing banking transactions, which has got nothing to do with games and all that. It can be used for creating a platform like Zoom or Cisco WebEx for web conferencing. So you can see how, uh, what a variety of applications you can develop using Java programming language. It's a language which can even be used on embedded devices. The programming of embedded devices can also be done 
using Java. So this is one language about which I wanted to talk to you. I will talk about the rest of the languages in the next class.